Okay, so we're going to start this year off in geometry discussing some kind of basic tools of geometry. Um, the first of these will be points, lines, and planes. Uh, this weekend you will need to watch two videos, 1-2 and 1-3, but that won't be for most nights. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in here and look at a point. A point just indicates a location and it has no size to it. That's why whenever we're graphing things, it's um, important that we try to make those dots as small as we can because they really aren't supposed to have any size to them at all. So we want them to be as small as possible. And we represent a point um, by a dot and then some capital letter, such as here, which is point A. That's how we would read that. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at is a line. A line is just a straight path that extends out um, indefinitely in both direction. That's why it's really important that we put the arrows um, on uh, both sides so that we can denote that it goes on forever. Okay. All right. And as you can see, we have a line here. We can denote a line two different ways. Um, we can either use two points on the line. So for instance, in this one, A, B with a little arrow on top, or you could call this one BA. That is the same line, it's just two different ways to write it. The other way we can do it is by a lowercase uh, cursive letter. So we can also call this line L. Okay, so those are our options for how to name a line, either two capital points or a lowercase cursive. All right, and then the last thing we have, whoops, is a plane. All right. A plane is a flat surface. That extends without end. So you can think of it as a piece of paper that goes on forever and ever. in all directions. Now to name a plane we need uh, three points on that plane so one way to do it would be by saying plane ABC those are three points on the plane and then you can rearrange those any way you like so I could also say plane BAC and so on. Another way to do that is by a capital letter and this is not a point on the plane, just any capital letter. So we can call it plane P. Okay, we have this P up top to denote that it's the plane. Notice P is not a point. All right, so that's point, line, and plane, kind of the basics. The next thing we're going to be looking at are collinear points. Collinear points are just points that lie on the same line. And then we also have coplanar. Coplanar um, are points or lines that lie on the same plane. Okay. So an example of collinear points in the, in the following picture would be, let's see, T, Q, and N. Those are all on the same line. So those are collinear points. All right, we have T up here, Q, and N. They're all on line M. OK, 
Okay. An example of coplanar points would be three points on the same plane. So for example, we could say V, R, and S. V, R, and S are all on the same plane. And I don't have any coplanar lines here. If I were to draw another line, say going right here, we'll just label that line A, B. Then uh, we could say that line AB and line RS are coplanar lines. Okay? All right, moving on, let's define a few more terms. We're going to look at a segment, it's a part of a line with definite endpoints. So we do have here um, endpoints here. So AB here, that is a segment. And how to name it, AB with a straight line, no arrows on top, or also we could call this BA either one. All right, for a ray, a ray is part of a line. With one endpoint, And then it's going to extend forever in the other direction. So it has one endpoint, and then it just goes on forever on the other side. And to denote a ray, we're going to use both of the points on that ray, AB. And then the arrow should go in the direction of the point that goes towards infinity. All right? So we need to make sure we write it in, as AB instead of BA. We'd have to be careful with rays. And then the last one we have are opposite rays. And opposite rays share, a, share the same endpoint. And form a line. So here, ray CA, notice I keep the arrow in the direction of the A, and then ray CB, those are opposite rays. That's how I could write them. All right, we're going to look at a few postulates now. Uh, they're pretty simple, so we're going to go through them quickly, um, but it is important that we kind of just mention them. And the first one of these postulates says that uh, through any two points, there's exactly one line and only one line. Okay, so if I were to draw a point here, call it X, call it, do a point here, call it Y, there is only one line that is going to go through those two points, and it is precisely that line that I just drew. There will be no other line that goes through both of those points, okay? And even if we were to draw a bigger one here and say, well, that's one, that's one it goes through those two points, well, a line extends forever, so those are just the same line. Okay, so that's postulate 1-1. One, one. If we look at 2, it says that if two lines intersect, then they only intersect in one point. So if I draw these two lines, they will only ever intersect at this one point, point A here. That is the only place they will touch. They will never come back around and touch again. Okay? All right, the next one tells us that if two planes intersect, then they intersect in one line, okay? So two planes will intersect in a line, not a point. So let's look at this example down here and um, try to see if we can understand what that says. We are given here what looks like a cube. These cubes are planes, so they do extend on forever. Um, and we're told that uh, well, we're told they represent a plane, and then we're asked, what is the intersection of plane ADC and BFG? So plane ADC is this top one, 
And then we also have plane BFG, which will be this plane here. And so we want to know where do those two planes intersect one another? Well, they intersect at this line here, which is line BC. So they're going to intersect at BC. Okay? So that that place where they touch, that is a line, remember. So the intersection of those two planes is BC. Okay, let's move on to the last postulate for this section, which is 1-4. And it tells us that through any three non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane. Okay, so through any three points that are not on the same line, there's only one plane. All right, so let's look at a problem to try to do this. Uh, we're asked here in part A, what plane contains points N, P, and Q? So let's look at those points. We have N, P, whoops, P, and Q. That is this plane in the back, this bottom one. So we can name that as plane, and we just need to three, use three letters. So we can actually just go ahead and use N, P, Q. All right, and then the last question. We want to know what plane contains points J, M, and Q. So we have J, J, M, and Q. So this one's a little bit trickier um, because it's actually, if we connect that here in here, this is going to be the plane that contains those three points. So it is not distinctly one side of that prism. Um, it's not included with that. So that would be plane. So that one was a little bit tricky. J, M, Q. All right. And then we could have also called that M, Q, P, J, P, Q, and so on. So that is it for this first section. Um, now I want you to move on to section 1-3 and watch that and be prepared with questions for class tomorrow.